Hey, what's up, guys? So this second video, I'm going to just be briefly going over some of the main pros and cons of Army uh, ROTC ECP, and um, there's really a bunch of things I could talk about. But I'm just going to try to kind of hit on the main points that are that I think would be most pertinent to you guys, and that I saw as the most important. So let's get right into it. Uh, starting with the pros. Uh, First thing definitely I'll hit on is free education. So when you're in a scholarship cadet in the ECP program, uh, every semester you'll get $5,000 in scholarship money plus uh, $600 for books. So you're getting $5,600 total. And then on top of that, the ROTC stipend, which is something like $400 a month, I don't remember it exactly. And you'll be getting that monthly. And then also, being that by contract you have to be enlisted in the National Guard, so an SMP cadet, you'll also be making around three hundred dollars for a drill. So you'll have ample money to uh, pay your college tuition. These uh, the MJCs, military junior colleges, aren't that expensive. So between the scholarship money, stipend, and National Guard payment monthly, you'll have ample money to pay your uh, tuition off um, with nothing, with no loans or anything. So you'll be walking away from the MJCs with no debt. And then secondly, after you finish the MJCs, when you go to uh, your regular college, you have the option to uh, take what's called EAP. Um, and this will tag on two more years to your service time, but the EAP will cover your full tuition at your uh, next school. And there's certain schools that will then pick up your room and board. So, for example, Syracuse University, Catholic University, Norwich, uh, Carson Newman, uh, Mercer University. There's also others. I'm not sure all of them off the top of my head. I go to Catholic University in Washington, D.C. But take the EAP. They'll pay for your tuition. And these schools will uh, pick up your room and board. So you can go through all four years of college with absolutely zero college debt. And that was a huge thing for me. And I think that's important to most the average uh the average kid finding school so that's something to keep in mind secondly i think i really like the uh duality of being an uh, ecp cadet because i knew i would have two years of military school and two years of regular school so coming out of high school i was definitely really wanted to go to west point ended up not working out i got the rotc scholarship instead so what that allowed me to do is i knew I would get to experience two years fully in military school, which is something I always wanted to do, but then also two years at a normal school. So I kind of got the best of both worlds in a sense. And also just in a more practical sense, I knew that I would take my freshman and sophomore year of college, go all in on my commissioning, focus on getting, uh, building my military resume, military experience. Now that I'm in a normal school, kind of more on the civilian side, a Catholic, I already have my career lined up in the army and the national guard as a second lieutenant and now i have two years and the summers to just go all in on building my um my resume for the civilian sector so just keeping my gpa really high catholic getting an internship this summer hopefully and then networking throughout the semesters so by the time i graduate college i hope the first two years i use have the army profession lined up second two years have my civilian sector my prospects for the civilian sector lined up and then also on top of all that, just enjoying the being a normal college student for your last two years. So I have a lot more free time. I'm able to do things that my Catholic I wasn't able to do at NIMI, which is New Mexico Military Institute. So you just kind of get a lot of different experiences within those four years. Another pro of a ECP is that you're able to do all the RTC training in two years. So for me, Personally, I liked it that way. I don't think I really wanted to do ROTC for four years at a regular college. I kind of like going all out for two years and then the next two years kind of experiencing other things and getting to take advantage of other opportunities. And another pro of that mo moving at such fast pace for ROTC is I think it makes you mature a lot faster. You have to grow a lot faster because to move at the tempo at these MJCs of learning all the ROTC training while being in a military school, you, you have to be mature about it. You have to take it really serious. 
you can't really be messing around if you want to uh, successfully get your commission. So I just think uh, more than the average kid at college, it helps you just develop into adult at a much faster rate on top of the accelerator RTC training. And the last pro I'll mention is you get to develop professional experience in your last year of college as opposed to being a cadet for, for four years. So now at Catholic, I'm um, a second lieutenant. I went to, I started commission in May. I went to annual training this summer for three weeks with my with 372nd Military Police Battalion, uh, which is in Washington, D.C. So I'm already starting to build my professional experience and getting reps in as a second lieutenant in my last years of college. So in that sense, you'd see yourself as being ahead of four years in, in some ways. And also, too, if you do everything right, you're on track to get uh, promoted to first lieutenant sometime around your second semester of your senior year. So I'm building professional experience my last two years, gaining reps as second lieutenant, learning how to be a good, solid professional officer. And then also getting, uh, before I even graduate college, I'm hopefully lined up for my promotion first lieutenant, as are all ECPs. All of us are able to get a promotion before you graduate your senior year. And then following graduation, when you go to Bullock, which is a uh, final officer training for those of you who are not really familiar with uh, how the how RTC works and all that, uh, you, you'll you uh, you'll be a first lieutenant at Bullock, which is most, almost everyone going to Bullock is just a butter bar uh, second lieutenant. So it's just an interesting thing to, uh, to think about for a pro. All right, so now for the cons. A lot of the pros that I mentioned can also be seen as cons in some ways, and I'll talk about that. I'll talk about both sides of it and how, you know, what I took away from all my experiences, how some of the things are pro, and also this, the same thing can also be a con. It just depends on your personality and what you're looking for. So for the con, as I mentioned before, pro was you move, uh, you move through RTC at an accelerated pace, faster pace. <coughs> You have to learn really fast. It's also a con uh, for some people. So basically, you're moving at an extremely high tempo. So you have to be extremely focused to be able to kind of accumulate all that knowledge and be able to apply it uh, to your RCC training. Because after your freshman year, you're going to go to advanced camp, which is all for four-year cadets. It's all the kids going to their senior year of college. They're uh, they're basically their final cadet summer training. It's called CST. You, as an ECP cadet, have to go into this as going into your sophomore year. So all you've done, military-wise, unless you're prior enlisted, is you did basic camp for ROTC. Then you went to your freshman year. You did your weekly labs on FTX, one or two FTXs per semester. And then... Hopefully you enlisted in time in the garden way to go to your unit and also get additional training in that sense. So if you think about it, your uh, your your peers at camp, a lot of them join RTC as a freshman. So they've had three years to really just soak in all the information from RTC, learn all the training really well, really in depth. Whereas basically as a freshman at the ZCP, you're just drinking from a fire hose. You're taking everything in as fast as you can. Like I even struggled at times to uh, to kind of really apply that knowledge properly because it was just not only are you going through all this RTC super fast pace, but you're also still worried about your classes and making friends and working out in PT in the morning. Like you still have a normal life outside of RTC, so you may not have the time to really uh, kind of get a grasp on the information as much as you'd like. So that's a con in the sense that you may feel a little less mature, a little more uh, inexperienced than a lot of your peers who you'll go to camp with. Also on top of that, there'd be a lot of prior enlisted guys, uh, you know, like uh, green to gold ROTC guys who have had 10 years of experience here. Your, your knowledge is really not even comparable to theirs. So in that sense, a lot of ECP cadets are going to struggle at camp, just being that, you know, you had to take in so much such a fast rate your freshman year but that's not to uh discourage you it's just something to think about and know if you go in as an ecp just be ready to learn and stay on top of your information because you don't have a lot of time to take everything in that you need to be an effective uh, cadet at camp 
All right, so secondly, <coughs> like I said before, I talked about how as a uh, ECP cadet, you have the best of both worlds. So you get to experience military school if that's something you want. Like it's, it was something I wanted. And then two years at a normal school kind of being primarily a civilian with the exception of you, uh, you go to drill once a month as a lieutenant. But this can also this also can be seen as a con you have to go to a military school for two years. So I went to New Mexico Military Institute. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Extremely different. I went to New NIMI, uh, as in Roswell, New Mexico. You know, it was a completely different environment for me. I'm from the city. I wasn't used to my surroundings and stuff. And then on at the military school, now at the military school alone, you're living a military life all the time. So you're waking up super early pretty much five or six days a week. You're, you're uh, accounting for high tempo or ROTC training. Not only that, but on outside of ROTC, you're also in the Corps of Cadets, which you have additional military training for, you know, such as like drill practices, parades, and meetings, learning all these new things just alone as in the military school. And then you're just not, you're not having the typical college experience and you know, you're not gonna be, your, your first two summers going into freshman year, going into sophomore year, your whole summers are taken up with training. There's kind of a lack of freedom at these schools. Like oftentimes you're only allowed to go out on the Saturday night and come back on Sunday. Sometimes they'll take that away from you. Can't leave campus on Friday nights. Have to be back five o'clock on Sundays. It's just military school there's a lot of pros and cons to military school alone so it's just something to keep in mind like if you if you are don't think you're gonna want to you're gonna be able to last through the military school your personality is not built for it then i would avoid ecp so just but also too i would be open to it just because military school brings you a lot of amazing experiences at the same time and like i said it's only two years so you still get those two years at your normal college so i was willing to sacrifice two years of not having fun, and this is the, the, the tr fun in the traditional sense, I guess, uh, to get my commission out of these schools. And then, um, all right, so lastly, this is one of the biggest things that I've been going through as a ECP lieutenant now in a legitimate unit in DC. It's amongst your, not only the cadets, your, when you'll experience it when you're a cadet at summer training, and you also experience it in your unit following your commission. Some of your units, not all, because it depends on where you go, but it's definitely harder to uh, garner respect as an ECP lieutenant. And this is because you did ROTC for two years. You went to you went to cadet summer training, did your MS4 year, commissioned, and then you don't go straight to Bullock after graduation. You're so technically in the sense, some people describe you as not a fully qualified lieutenant. And also take away the bullock thing. You also haven't even gotten your bachelor degree yet. So you still have a chance that your commission can get taken away from you being that your, uh, the commission is contingent upon you completing that bachelor's degree. So with that being said, that's not something to discuss. It is a con of ECP. It's just, a lot of people will tell you like, oh, you're just an ECP lieutenant. You're not a legitimate second lieutenant. They look at you with a little less respect and this isn't to discourage you. It's just the reality of the facts. But me, the personality type I am, I, I look at it as more motivation. And I realize that I have to compensate further for this just general perception that ECP lieutenants aren't the most qualified or knowledgeable or the hardest workers. So I internalize that as I need to go as hard as possible. Number one, to graduate college, make sure I maintain my commission, but also in my unit, just to be hold myself to a more professional standard, right? So it's like PT test, just try to kill everybody on that PT test. Classroom wise, try to have, try to get straight A's, whatever, whatever your GPA goal is, because you want to do everything you can to kind of put out this professional persona that you're not that you're that while you didn't go to Bullock, you're still willing to work as hard as possible and that you hold the standards of an officer. So yeah, that's a that's really sums up the main pros and cons that I wanted to touch upon uh, you guys with. So uh, 
If you have any questions or, or uh, concerns, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you guys. Appreciate it.